Welcome to rebuilding a large Clarkson single cylinder vertical steam engine and this is part 24, refitting the steam chest and the slide valve. When I count them up I realise that I do not have enough studs to fully complete this job. This is not a big issue, I can just go and buy some more studding. What's slightly puzzling is that I do not know where the original pieces of studding went. They're not on the floor, they're not on the bench, they're not anywhere to be seen. So to start with I'll use the pieces of studding I already have. I'm putting one piece of studding in each corner of the port face and not forgetting the gasket and just making sure that I don't tear the gasket for the man who commented. I put the steam chest in place. Now the steam chest only fits one way and it was a process of elimination. The easiest fit was the way it went on and I had to tap it with a soft mallet. And with the steam chest in place and the gasket here you see me trimming the gasket by running a knife down the inside edge of the steam chest to make sure that none of the gasket material protrudes into the slide valve area. I've purposely left these gaskets slightly oversized, particularly on the outside edge. It's always better to have the gaskets oversized than undersized. And once again using a sharp knife, and this is not a sharp knife, this is the one that lays on my bench, but it's sharp enough, it's an easy job to trim the outside edge of the gasket. This clip shows the fitting of the steam chest cover gasket and it is of course exactly the same as the other gasket because I cut them out as a pair. No sooner have I fitted this gasket than I remove it because what I need to do is just put a couple of nuts on as you can see here which holds the steam chest tightly to the cylinder. This will allow me to set up the slide valve. But before I do that I'm going to put some more studs in because I do want to make definitely sure that I've put the steam chest the right way around and indeed I have. Most of these studs are going in by finger pressure only. I'm only using the pliers on any stubborn studs and I'm making sure that the pliers are only touching the metal threads very close to the steam chest, not on the outer edge. Most of everything that I do is common sense, so it seems to be common sense to me not to handle the threads near the end with a pair of pliers, otherwise I may have difficulty putting the nuts in place. This video footage is of course speeded up mainly to prevent any viewers from slipping into a coma. Talking about viewers, I got a really good comment from one the other week. He put, I have noticed a glaring error in your video. That paint is not NER green, as you are intent on misinforming your viewers, but is in fact mental hospital purple. Any nut job could see that. I trust you will update this video with the correct information immediately. I liked this comment, so I drafted a reply, but YouTube wouldn't let me send it. The reply goes as follows. I really must go and see the optician for a new white stick and while I'm there I will complain about that stupid dog I was given a while back. The thing stopped moving about six months ago and never eats the cans of food I put down for it. I always put the can open and near the tins as well. In fact I have also noticed a really unpleasant smell in the house recently. Thankfully the paint fumes helped to cover that up. Here you see me trimming the gasket on the outside of the steam chest. And it's a very simple job, just take your time, many strokes with the knife and you get a nice clean finish. Never put too much pressure on the knife because if the knife slips it will make a real mess of the paint or even worse than mahogany cladding. After applying copious amounts of steam oil to the port face and the gland material inside the stuffing box, it's time to fit the valve rod. Followed by fitting the valve itself. The valve is now in the steam chest and the driver block is now going into the valve. And now I'm about to screw the valve rod into the driver block when suddenly I realise I have not put on the gland nut. Now I haven't staged this for the video. I am incredibly stupid at times and I forget to put things on like this. Very much like in the days of the one piece cover on a rubber plug. Often I found I would wire the plug and then realise that I hadn't put the wire through the hole in the rubber cover. And I can't put this down to a senior moment because I did things like this when I was much younger. Probably worse really because I was thinking about too many things at once. Anyway, the valve spindle is now being screwed into the driver block and the gland nut is in place so everything is okay. You can see the gland material popping in and out of the stuffing box as I move the valve rod. I thought it would be clever and show this for the purposes of the video. But then when I tried to put the valve packing back into the stuffing box, it didn't want to go in. So I had to quickly use something to press it into place. I know, I use my blunt knife. After which, I can happily tighten up the gland nut. 
Now, a word about tightening gland nuts. Never over tighten them. They need to be initially finger tight and then just nipped up a little bit with a suitable tool. Do not use a pair of pliers. And everything now feels very smooth and does what it's supposed to do. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.